Welcome to the first air gun show of 2015. This week we've got the very impressive Remington Express gun scope combo on the test bench. But before that, I'm heading out to a fishery where scavenging rats have developed a taste for trout pellets. rat shooting on a trout fishery tonight. That generally goes that where there's water you'll get a few rats. Here it's even more of a problem because it's fed by a stream. It's like a ratty highway. However many rats we shoot or they poison, you're always going to get more turning up. Now the big thing here is that the trout are fed on a diet of these high protein fish pellets. When the owner comes out and scatters those around, it's inevitable that some are going to get dropped in on the ground amongst the grass. The rats have cottoned onto that. They've got food on tap here and they're having it easy. Hopefully tonight we can teach them a bit of a lesson. My first stop on this dark and damp ratting raid is, of course, the feed bins. Right, well this is the main feeding station, so it's where most of the pellets are getting spilt. And I would assume that that's where we're going to encounter most rats. What I'm going to do, I'm going to be planning to shoot them here. I'm going to pace back now, about 15 metres, set up my stall so I know exactly what range I'm shooting these rats over. If you're going to have any kind of success on this sort of air gunning assignment, you'll need to be comfortable. Otherwise you'll be heading back home for a cup of tea in 10 minutes. So I'm suited and booted for the weather, and I've brought along the shooting stool. Right, that's my range sorted, nice firm base to shoot from. I'm going to head back now and put some bait down. That should do nicely. The Huntsman fared well on our last ratting session, but this is a different challenge from the usual night out after farmyard rats, and I'm eager to see what the evening brings. Right, it's just a matter of sitting and waiting now. I'm not going to switch the lamp on for a while. Hopefully the rats will come out in the darkness, get a taste for those pellets, and then be more confident when I do need to switch on. With that, it's just me and the darkness. But not for long. After just a few minutes of waiting, the rats are tucking in. So it's on with the lamp. That rat is soon followed by another. And another. The challenge is finding one that stays still long enough to get a clean shot off. Eventually, I get a good chance. That one needed a quick follow-up shot. Great thing about having a multi-shot mag, got a second shot in there quickly and dispatched it. Early evidence suggests there'll definitely be more where that one came from, so I sit tight. Well, the pumps here are making a heck of a noise, but it's probably no bad thing. It's certainly helping to mask any sound I'm making, and the sound of the gunshots must be negligible. Those pumps certainly aren't putting the rats off. Just a moment later one stops nicely in my sights and I'm ready to take my second shot of the night. Oh, 
Well, that one was reluctant to keep still, but it presented me with a chance in the end, and I took advantage of it. There might be large numbers of rats, but they're not going to make things easy for me by hanging around, so I have to be ready to take swift, decisive shots. Here comes another one. Got it. They're very twitchy, and I didn't have much time for that one, but uh, managed to knock it over with a headshot. With the bait station doing its job nicely, I'm starting to get used to the terrain and the rat's likely lines of approach, which means I can pick them off at an ever-increasing rate. I'm keeping the lamp on most of the time now, although it is making the rats a bit skittish. But they just can't resist the bait. If only they'd stay still in the right place for just long enough to offer me some more shots. The rats are reluctant to keep still. They don't like the light, but more than that, and it's often the case with particle baits, is they're running in, grabbing one or two pellets, and running off with them. I'm going to try stamping them into the ground. Hopefully they'll linger while they're trying to pick them out. Well, I've tramped those in as much as I can. Let's see if it slows them down. Straight away, this new tactic starts to pay dividends. That one certainly flipped, but it's often the case with headshots and uh, it was dead by the time it hit the ground. Right, I think we've had the best of the action from here now, so I'm gonna pick up the dead rats get them to the fire site and head for home. And I've got a handheld lamp for this task so I can pick up the rats without trailing the wires from the gun lamp. It's not the most glamorous part of the job, but clearing up the shot rats is an important task. There's no point in putting in the pest control hours if you're going to leave the place littered with rat carcasses. After disposing of those rats, the return journey provides me with an unexpected opportunity. run across the car park. It wasn't hanging around, but I'm going to wait here for a couple more minutes. We might be able to one or two more to the tally. I thought I'd be packing up now, but that's two more in the bag. It just goes to show it's worth acting on your instincts after getting a sighting of your quarry. A final flurry could make a real difference to the knight's tally, if they just keep still. The last sweeps of the lamp reveal more opportunities but they're still not giving themselves up easily. As always, the key is to be patient and wait for proper chances rather than taking risky shots at a twitchy target.
Well, that was well worth hanging on for. What's happened is this is where the feed's delivered. There are pallets stacked on there, are sacks of pellets, and we've seen the rats have actually been gnawing at some of them. There do seem to be quite a few rats around this spot, and I reckon if we hung on, we could add quite a few more to the tally. However, it's gone midnight now. We really have got to head for home. An exciting after dark foray in pursuit of scaly tails there. And now it's over to the Air Gun Show News. This is the Air Gun Show News, brought to you by the Air Gun Center. Guard against white hot bias. That's the latest advice from shooting organizations. But it's got nothing to do with the unusual choices of headwear in the field. White Hat Bias is where subjective opinions are allowed to skew the evidence in support of particular policy aims. Basque has warned that subjective bias risks affecting research into shooting related issues more and more as a general election approaches. Chief Exec Richard Alley said Basque would work harder than ever to stamp it out. The new Bushnell Lynx binoculars from Edgar Brothers take night vision to the next level. These 25 by 40 bins even feature a built-in infrared torch for after-dark viewing out to 80 meters. Weighing less than half a kilo, they feature a durable rubber armored housing to protect against the knocks and bumps of field use. Powered by two AAA batteries, they'll run for up to 20 hours with the IR switched on or up to 70 hours with it turned off. Put on the protective lens cap, and they can also be used for daylight reconnaissance. It's all go at Brocock's new Staffordshire factory. They've unveiled details of a limited run rifle, the Concept Elite Special Edition. And there'll also be a Contour XL Forest Green SE arriving in gun shops this February. It'll have a soft touch Manelli made ambi stock in green and will come to the market with two six shot magazines and a silencer adapter. And finally, license fees are in the spotlight once again in Northern Ireland and Basque is fighting for the rights of those who shoot FAC air guns here. At a recent firearms licensing fees workshop in Stormont, the Department of Justice suggested that the cost of processing a license is £131, but Basque analysed the evidence and found a number of errors that overstated actual costs. MLAs admitted that the DOJ clearly still have a lot of work to do. That was the Air Gun Show News. This week's test gun is the Remington Express Synthetic. It comes as a kit with a 4x32 scope and mounts. It's a serious looking gun, yet the whole combo costs just £159.95. All you need to add is a pocket full of pellets and you're ready to hit the range. The first thing to strike me about this gun was its size. It measures up at an adult sized 116 centimetres from butt to muzzle. So it's not really an air gun that's going to suit smaller shooters. However, the synthetic stock keeps weight comfortably below four kilos. So it's very manageable once you've got it shouldered. The synthetic stock isn't quite as elegant looking as the wooden version, but it still suits the gun. It's very robust, so you don't need to worry about it picking up the occasional knock in the field. There's stippling on either side of the forend and pistol grip, and that makes for a really secure hold. For an ambidextrous stock, the fit is very good. The long forend caters for a variety of different holds, and the beaver tail profile sits comfortably in the hand. The pistol grip has a pronounced rake and is nicely contoured. And there's a rubber butt pad, which makes for comfortable shouldering. The only gripe that shooters may have with stock design is the absence of a raised cheek piece. As it is, eye alignment's perfectly good with the supplied sights, but if you decide to go for a set of tellies with a bigger objective lens, you may find it a bit low. Accuracy comes courtesy of a 19-inch rifled steel barrel, 
and considering the price of the gun, engineering and finish are excellent throughout. The bluing is good and the Remington logos are subtle but stylish. And reassuringly, if you give the gun a good shake, there are no disconcerting rattles from any of the components. The gun comes supplied with bright fibre optic open sights which are adjustable for windage and elevation with a positive click of the numbered dials. In my opinion, the absence of any kind of guard on the foresight does leave it vulnerable to bumps. However, most owners are probably going to bypass the open sights and put the supplied tellies straight on, which incidentally does help to bring the point of balance comfortably back from the forend. Cocking takes surprisingly little effort considering this is a spring-powered air gun knocking out around 11 foot-pounds. The relatively long barrel obviously helps with leverage, but the stroke is also exceptionally smooth. Once the barrel's locked down, pellets are loaded direct to the breech, the angled face helping to ensure that they're thumbed in far enough to avoid any risk of skirts being clipped as you push the barrel back up into its secure lockup with a gratifying click. Cocking the gun automatically sets the safety, a feature that I'm always pleased to see. And the safety catch on this gun is worthy of special mention because unlike the safeties on a lot of springers, you don't need to re-cock the gun to reset it after you've pushed it in. All you need to do is push the lever back towards you and the safety catch pops back out, making the gun safe again. The trigger is just as impressive and easily exceeds this gun's price point. The broad, gently curved metal blade sits comfortably in the finger, enabling you to get the most from this two-stage adjustable unit. Straight from the box, the first stage was a little shorter and lighter than I would have liked, but the second stage was so crisp, positive and easy to predict that I decided not to mess about with it. That's the main features covered. Let's see how the Remington Express shoots. Well, the 177 calibre test guns turned out a brilliant group over the 20 metre range, and that's in a slight breeze. It looks great on paper, and is certainly going to be accurate enough for hunting at close and out to mid range, and it's going to make mincemeat of plinking targets. That accuracy is down to several factors. What discernible recoil there is, is crisp and comes straight back into the shoulder, and of course, that very predictable trigger also helps to harness that accuracy. Shooting the Remington Express really has been a pleasant surprise. Admittedly, the 38 cm length of pull is going to make it a bit of a handful for smaller shooters, but there really is little else to find fault with, except perhaps that low cheek piece. Remington is a legendary name in the world of firearms, but I reckon the Express is deserving of that name. This affordable combo really has exceeded my expectations. That's all for this week. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. A very happy new year from all at the Airgun Show and if you aren't already a member of the BASC, make it your new year's resolution to join the organisation that works to promote and protect your sport.